My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job is to entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. All right, I got some tough news for everyone who's sick of a market that's led by just a handful of tech stocks. You're wrong. Look at the stock of Eli Lilly, which was up nicely today on the news of an acquisition. They're buying a biotech company for $3.2 billion to expand into the inflammatory bowel disease space, gigantic space, on a day when the Dow dipped 31 points. S&P advanced 0.1%. NASDAQ gained 0.28%. I think it's worth pointing out that there's no rule that says only the tech titans can lead us higher. Sure, Apple and Amazon and Alphabet and Meta and Microsoft and NVIDIA, yeah, same old, same old, are on the move. And yes, we can say it's ridiculous that they keep climbing and some people can, can cling to the idea that they're overbite. But I say, wait a second, cowboy. Where does it say that this club is restricted? Where does it say that nobody can join in except companies that are loaded with tech, especially generative AI? Perhaps we should stop wasting our time worrying about how the gains are concentrated in the hands of a few cloistered tech titans and instead think about how a, a company can become sane and simply by doing everything right. Where are those companies? Why aren't there more of those companies? Again, there's no rule that a pharma stock can't leave this market, just like there ain't no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> Which brings me back to Eli Lilly, the air bud of big pharma. Think about what Lilly's accomplished here and how it's knocking on the trillion dollar door with a market cap of $872 billion. By the way, it was one point it was close to $900 billion before the stock pulled back from its highs. First, Lilly comes up with a weight loss and diabetes control injection that competes directly with Novo Nordisk's Ozempic. But unlike Novo Nordisk, Lilly has a huge balance sheet and can afford to put up gigantic, complicated, multi-billion dollar plants to pump out their drug. That matters because production capacity will be the real gating factor against the competition. It's why we didn't take profits, did not take profits in Lilly for the charitable trust when we heard of all the competitors at J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco at the beginning of the year. Credible competitors. I'm talking about Regeneron, Amgen. And boy, we didn't jump stick when, ship when Viking Therapeutics burst on the scene with a positive clinical trial for their own GLP-1 drug. How the heck can Viking make enough of it to matter? I'd only worry about this one if Big Pharma now, let's say, Pfizer, which failed its own weight loss drug trial, swoops in and buys buy, buy, buy. Viking. Lily's drug is just too good. And while we know it works on sleep, apnea, weight loss, and diabetes, you know what? I think the biggest indications involving heart problems, including blood pressure, are yet to come. Right, uh, that, that's not all Lily's doing. Right now, it's gotten approval for a drug that slows the progression of Alzheimer's disease, long considered totally impossible to, to take on. Kazluna. Uh, is safe, and for many people, it works to hold back the disease. And this is according to my own sources in the brain and migraine community. We don't know the size of this market. We just know, sadly, it's growing like a weed, and this drug is one of two hopes, the other being from Biogen. And now Lilly takes the cash that's spewing from its coffers and buys Morphic, a small early-stage biotech for $3.2 billion, fulfilling a promise to find new drugs to build its pipeline. Sure, that's a 79% premium. I know that seems like a lot, but Lilly needs to focus on the burgeoning immunology segment with a pill to help manage inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease. These are large and growing diseases, some of the fastest out there, sadly. While Lilly has done uh, what Lily's done with, it, with its money is get behind a drug that might be more potent than its own competing drug candidates that are listed on its website. It's worked diligently to ensure that it has no real patent cliff, unlike, say, Pfizer, which is in a deep one, or Bristol-Myers, which is similarly suffering. Oh, and let's not forget, every time you hear that so-and-so might have a pill version of some GLP-1 weight loss drug competitor, uh, not just an injectable, remember that Lily's working on a pill, too. Why is Lily's strength so important to me and should be to you? Simple, because it's an obvious winner outside of big tech. Rather than bemoaning the limited breadth of the market, maybe we should be asking why other companies aren't joining the club. Who's to say that only pure technology can win here? If you actually show smarts as a CEO, if you have a vision, if you can actually well, then you can belong in the mega cap universe, too. There is no law that says you can't. This week, for example, we get earnings from J.P. Morgan, arguably the best bank in the world. Its market cap is not in significant $589 billion. The stock trades, though, at a ridiculously low 12 times earnings multiple. 
Why shouldn't it sell 22 times forward earnings instead? That's what people are paying for the average stock in the S&P 500. Is J.P. Morgan, the best bank in the world, actually worth dramatically less than the average stock? PepsiCo also reports this week, in 1995, Coca-Cola was the second biggest company in the Fortune 500. Now PepsiCo has double the revenues of Coca-Cola. Hey, maybe if it made more swift moves or bigger takeovers, then it could be worth $1 trillion instead of $223 billion. A shrewd observer recently asked me by email, how could Exxon, with $330 billion in revenues over the last 12 months, not be much, much bigger than NVIDIA? which rang up just $79 billion in revenues in the same period. Well, Exxon's worth $500 billion, while NVIDIA clocks in at $3 trillion. Well, the answer to that is that this market values growth much more than it just values plain old revenues. And I got to tell you, NVIDIA's got the growth in spades and much higher margins. Oh, and Ford, which I actually think is breaking out, had $177 billion in revenues, while Tesla, considered by many to be a tech stock, not an auto stock, had $95 billion in sales, both in the last 12 months. But Tesla's worth $800 billion, and Ford's valued at $51 billion. If Ford can come up with an electric car that outsells Tesla and makes more money per vehicle than, and then replicates that in Germany and China, well, guess what? I think Ford could be a mega cap, too. There's no restriction on that. All these material differences, the stepping stones to $1 trillion, have been scaled by companies that simply can't stop innovating. Amazon comes up with Amazon Web Services and Amazon Advertising. Meta dreams up reels, take on TikTok. Uh, Apple's got a monster installed base, which allows it to get the artificial intelligence uh, technology from other companies for free, simply because they want access to all of Apple's customers. Microsoft has Copilot and ChatGPT. Alphabet has the staggeringly popular YouTube. NVIDIA now has a whole platform to go with its ships, including software. These companies maintain their status through invention. The question is not why they're so sainted while others get left behind. That's obvious. The question is why other companies aren't doing the same thing, say, that Eli Lilly's doing to get in the winner's circle. Or, hey, like NVIDIA, the company that came out of nowhere, but not really. A CEO, Jensen Mon, was working on the concept of these ultra-fast GPUs a decade ago. I think there's so many companies with failures of imagination that they are their own worst enemies. The winners here are colossal thinkers. Much of the S&P would do well to show some similarities to the tech titans. Bottom line, it's time to stop castigating a market that awards trillion-dollar status to a scam few and start recognizing that companies only reach those heights because they've earned it, and others would be very good to emulate them. Rhonda in Kansas, Rhonda. Booyah, Jim. Booyah, Rhonda. What's going on? Jim. Spirit Aero Systems, a Boeing supplier. Your perspective, please. Okay. Now, Boeing's buying them with stock. Uh, I think that there's a persistent buyer of Boeing in this stock market every single day. And my take is actually, I know this can be a little counterintuitive, keep it. Buy it. Spirit is going higher, I think. Boeing has to buy it. And Boeing saw the worst possible thing happen today, and it's still flying. Eddie in Texas, Eddie. Good evening, Jim. Given Good evening, Pfizer's recent performance, heading into Q2 earnings, is Pfizer a buy? All right, this is the, one of the toughest questions possible. And the reason why it's so tough is we must see something from CGen, the old Seattle Genix, this quarter. If not, the stock's going to go to a 6.5% yield and go lower. So this is a make or break quarter, and we're all going to wait for it. I need to go to Tom in my home state of New Jersey, Tom. Mr. Kramer, yes. great to talk to you. Listen to thank you every you. night. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for all the work you do for all the little guys. And I just wanted to ask you about Disney. I've had it a couple of years, and it just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. No, it so doesn't. And no, 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 Tom, please don't do that. My Chapel Trust has been buying some right here. It sells at only 20 times earnings. It's got box office success. It's got the theme parks. I want to thank you for the kind words, but I'm urging you not to sell Disney, and if anything, I would be inclined to buy some. Right, companies only reach the trillion-dollar status when they've actually earned it. The question is not why they're so sainted while others get left behind. It's why other companies aren't doing things to get them in the winner's circle. Failure of imagination, people. Oh, man, money tonight. Many say the market knows all. So our stock price is offering clues as to what we'll see in November's presidential election. I'm going off the charts to find out. Then, is the tap running out for Constellation Brands mining the company after earnings and giving my key takeaways from the quarter? Plus, I'm giving my take on whether Nike can find its footing in an uncertain market, as promised this morning on Squawk on the Street. So stay with Kramer.
Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.